AOE Media sponsored this podcast. Sure, you're welcome. Don't you? Rename it to uh, so uh, that's okay. <laughs> Ingo, the next version of Typo 3 is version 4.2, and uh, you are the release manager of that. Yep. It's a new principle. The core team is having uh, cycling the release manager ship between the core team members, and you had the honor this time. So at uh, the recently um, held Type of Three conference in Karlsruhe, you had a talk about it, yep. and we're just going to quickly flip through these major changes. Sure, you're welcome. Thanks. So where you want to start? Uh, just let's start with, with the slides. And uh, first thing is um, that we started off with raising the, the requirements uh, for Type 3, mm -hmm. uh, which means that um, we went and uh, chose PHP 5.2 to be the least requirement for Type 3 4.2. Uh, basically, you should be able to run it on 5.1 if your Linux distribution doesn't come with 5.2 yet. But um, that, in, in general, it might happen that it doesn't work. Okay. And we have MySQL 5.0 yeah. support requirement. Yeah, we'll see later that we are going to um, be running uh, UTF-8 by default, and thus we are also raising the requirements for MySQL and uh, the 4.0 and 4.1 versions of MySQL running out anyways. Mm -hmm. So um, you have UTF-8 yeah. by default? Um, yeah, it's uh, not, not in the core yet, but um, it will be for the final version, mm -hmm. and uh, this will... Um, this will save us a lot of trouble with uh, trusted conversions. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm getting ready ready for five zero. Somehow you write here um, because version yeah. five zero is It'll also UTF fully eight or UTF eight. Also. Um. Yeah. So we also restructured or realigned the backend. We are losing the lower frame and uh, moving stuff around a bit. Um, it's all going to be in the upper right corner because we, we think that gives you more real uh, screen estate and uh, should be somehow easier and we can... Uh, but this is still a Photoshop mockup, right? Yeah. And something I think you actually work with Jens Hoffman about yeah. this on the conference, so it's pretty new information. Yeah, also. that's... Uh, all fixtures yet, but uh, it will be really cool. Um, one thing we've done to start with that is uh, if you go into the web page view or any other TC form, you'll um, notice that uh, for getting into that uh, upper frame, we had to make it empty and available for, for the new stuff. Yeah. And you know that the secondary options used to pop up up there, and uh, now we change that to let them pop up directly in the form. Okay, cool. That was the first wow. step we needed to take. Are there more usability-related things you can show us from? Uh, yeah, that's uh, also another thing which is not in the core yet, but uh, should be, is um, that if you ever have wondered what that doc module is about. It's uh, basically about um, your documents you left open yeah. and does you get that yellow marks. Uh, some users started editing uh, this page mm -hmm. then, then that minutes ago and uh, uh, with that document you, you can find your open documents and uh, close them to get rid of those warnings. Mm -hmm. And um, it somehow is a bit cryptic name, um, and therefore we are going to re rename it to what it really is, like open documents. Yeah, yeah. And it somehow uh, belongs to the user, and thus it will be okay. moved into yeah. the user module. All right. That's all um, some way of cleaning up a bit. Yes. And making things more logic. And we can see another part of the um, mockup is having a menu for, for clearing the different types yeah. of caches we've got. And now also the, the colors uh, tell you um, how critical 
uh, it is uh, to clear certain yeah. caches. Yeah. And we have uh, some search functionality. Yeah. Uh, shortcuts. If, if you kn knew the shortcuts from the uh, lower frame, you might have had uh, shortcuts for different list queues, but they uh, all had the same icon, and thus it was um, difficult to distinguish them. And uh, we hope that that new uh, menu will make it more easy to um, distinguish be because you uh, you'll have a name next to the icon. Right. So these icons down there is what goes up in the upper right yeah. corner here in that's this, right. in this exactly. list. Okay. And, uh, and then search that's box. some, uh, that's ac actually the, the search box from below here, but um, a little bit improved. Mm -hmm. Just uh, actually not a little bit, but really cool new features yeah. coming there. We have a TS editor with code highlighting. Yeah. We don't have to say a lot about that because I already did a podcast with Tobias, but it's yeah. a very impressive work and I think everyone yeah. will fall in love with that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's definitely cool. there you see a screenshot. Yeah, patch tree improvements. Oh. Um, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's move to the list view or patch whatever. And as you see, yeah. As you see, I already did <coughs> some more beautification with Much that. Much more and beautiful. And uh, you can start typing and uh, you'll uh, get only yeah, those yeah. who fit. That's um, very nice. And uh, you can click and make, make it um, return to the usual mode. And one idea we also have is that actually that magnifying glass icon doesn't fit right now because what we have right now is more like a filter and thus we yeah. would like to have an icon like a funnel and if you click on it it will turn into search mode and that icon will change to that uh, magnifying glass mm -hmm. and the idea is that the filter only works on the pages visible in the tree like it was right now and only graying out mm -hmm. the pages not matching your query and the search will also work on pages you don't see and then it uh, will not gray out the other pages but um, will only leave those visible who match your uh, yes. query and make uh, pages visible which aren't yet. So like a research. Right. Yeah, and uh, the admin panel overhaul was done by Michael Stucke. Okay. And um, he, he did some cleanup where you uh, could have had a long, um, long lines of, of admin panels. And you now can add a timeout, and you can, with that, uh, you can search for certain objects mm. which. Uh, take a long time to yeah. run and uh, decrease your performance. Okay. Then we have a new installer too. Yeah. We'll have. Is there anything new to this compared to the podcast? I had this uh, summer, I think it was in June, I interviewed um, Thomas yeah. and uh, Jens about this. Yeah, actually, uh, right now we have the first steps working. Okay, let's see. Um, the um, one to three install is not that uh, spectacular right now, but um, there are already some things working in the back end, like uh, it'll all be more beautiful mm -hmm. and uh, more grouped up in, into smaller <coughs> groups, so we get rid of that um, long list uh, all configurations page yeah. which really really should improve uh, usability mm -hmm. okay it looks great yeah and one cool feature is that all the modules have been tagged and then you can go and uh, search for like a database or so or PHP should work yeah and then you can go there and yeah, we'll highlight the the places where where it finds yes yes stuff. All right. We also have uh, mu moving elements in yeah. workspaces, a feature I uh, implemented, and um, I think I'll use another podcast for that. But um, 
it's also in general a re really cool feature yeah <laughs> many people have been waiting for yes yes and um I also needed just a final uh, amount of sponsorship, and actually, after asking for it yesterday, Olivier uh, Doberkau from Deka oh yeah. offered it. So that's cool. Yeah, it's really generous, and uh, I'm very happy about a community so supportive of yeah. the development uh, we are doing. Cool um, extensions for the core. Yeah, um, there's a page in the wiki where. Um, extensions for the core are collected and uh, everybody can um, raise their votes for every extensions extension listed there and um, from time to time the core team has a look at that page and uh, goes over it and uh, this way we can see uh, which extensions the community likes to have in the mm. core and uh, this time we want to go and uh, integrate some extensions of the, them, like direct shortcuts. Let's say you have a shortcut page, page A, pointing to another page, page B. And uh, in the menu right now, you would have um, pointing the entry to page A, but it yes. actually should point to page B. Mm -hmm. And that's what this extension mm -hmm. does. Okay. Um, then the photo selector is some kind of a new um, UI element and um, imagine an extension having the possibility to select a template file in, in a flex form, for example, to configure only that pl one plugin differently from the others. And um, you can do that already, but uh, imagine uh, that plugin would be uh, capable of uh, using just a folder and uh, picking the templates as itself by, by name or so. And uh, this wasn't possible to, to say, use this folder, and uh, that yeah, should right. be working with that. Who thing. wrote these extensions? Um, just uh, some members from the community. Okay. I don't know right now. And now we are taking it in as a system yeah. extension yeah. in Type of 3 core. So yeah. this also serves as an example of how development on extensions, which is free for everyone, yeah. can, can lead to features taken into the core and maintained officially. Yeah. So there are many roads into uh, core development, yeah. I think. And I see more and more of this collaboration between the core members who has the access to the code repository and yeah. the outside community. Um, so I'm, I'm very happy about yeah. that flexibility you you show. Um, yes, so um, a little about the further steps. Yeah. And this is for the remaining. For the X in general. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, there might be some people out there asking themselves uh, how long will there be uh, for X version with uh, 5 0 on the horizon? And uh, we. Clearly, you can say that as long as people are using 4.x, we will support that. And this is just open source. As long as you are using it and as long as you want to uh, improve it and, and get your hands dirty on the code, and just go ahead. Cool. Great. Actually, I have a little uh, bonus uh, demonstration here in the end. Um, so if I just exit my slideshow, I can show you because this is brand new. We just put this into the code repository yesterday evening where we had a chance to review some patches of each other. And um, uh, let me see. So hopefully this works for me. Um, it's an improvement to localization in uh, the core of Type 3 and it is developed as a part of the extension I'm working on called uh, L10N MGR, mm -hmm. Localization Manager, um, a project which is in fact uh, quite interesting. We have a mailing list and we are trying to merge together the functionality of uh, two localization yep. managers, which has each uh, a different strength. Um, the one from uh, Daniel Silinski is very powerful in that it has a great integration of external uh, translation tools, what is called CAT tools, uh, while the one I did doesn't. Yep. But on the other hand, mine is very faithful to the way uh, <laughs> information is stored in Type 3. So if we just merge those two, we have a perfect marriage. Yep. And um, we'll see if that is happening soon. But this feature is quite easy for you to understand out there since um, I know I just logged in as an ordinary admin. I'm not quite sure if this will show us what I want. Or maybe I'll have to switch an account. Let's just see here. 
No, actually it doesn't. So um, for a long time we have had the diff view between two records that where the one is a localization of the other. We were able to compare whether the default value uh, the, the main value um, or the, the value of the main language mm -hmm. on the website was changed by someone. For a translator, it's important to see what changed, so we would have this difference view. But we didn't have it for flex forms, since in flex forms these things are integrated into the same record. But finally, we got it, and uh, as you can see, for a translator, it will be evident um, what changes has been um, happening to the main translation yeah. or the main content and he can adapt his translation accordingly. So uh, this is in the corner. Yeah, cool. Good. So um, thanks for giving us a quick brush up on yeah, sure. the upcoming yeah, features and uh, working in the core team. Yeah, you're always welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Ingo.